I like trains. I don't know what most of you expected at this point. The game has been rigged. Forget all the rules. Stop believing what you're doing. I guess this isn't so much of a surprise for most people. Uh, it, it, it's, it's just one of those things that I feel like I don't have to explain anymore. Uh, maybe a few years ago I would have, but not 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 now. Anyway, so we're talking about Railroad Tycoon. This is uh, it's a it's a it's a sim. It's a it's a business simulator. It's kind of the original business simulator. No, 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 not the. There were a few, but but, but Roller Tycoon kind of set the stage for a lot of other tycoon style games like Roller Coaster Tycoon and Zoo Tycoon and all these other tycoon games where you got to you know manage your own little business and uh, you know do whatever you wanted. But Roller Tycoon is where it really really hit home, and I don't think most people realize how old this series is. We haven't gotten a new Railroad Tycoon in a long time, but it goes back to 1990 with the original. And I figured we'd, of course, start there. It was the first one. And, uh... Okay, well, here's the thing about the first Railroad Tycoon, and you need to understand this. It's, a, uh, It's old. Like, really old. What did I say? Did you think I was joking? Because, yo, it's a DOS game. And, uh, I mean, it's very easy to play nowadays with DOSBox. And it's actually considered freeware, so it's very easy to get a hold of. You don't even need to buy it. But is it worth playing now? I mean, I guess it depends on your point of view. For me, I mean, it kind of is. Because it definitely shows how far we've come in terms of game development and things of that nature. Nowadays, this is, of course, nothing special at all. Because, I mean, look at it. It's clunky, it's old, it's dated. But at the time, in 1990, when this game was formally released, it was actually pretty awesome. It was very deep for a DOS game. For a game this dirt simple, it had a lot of interesting mechanics, such as, like, an economy to focus on, and factors like that. And, of course, it had trains, locomotives, multiple different ones, and setting routes between various cities and things of that nature. There are several different maps to explore, as well as different graphics and sound options. And I don't mean, like, resolution and stuff like that. I mean, like, straight-up, completely different visual representations of the game. Because back in 1990, a lot of people had vastly different technical capabilities and different add-ons, and it was a PC game, so you had to actually, like, in the beginning, explain to the game what your computer was capable of doing, so it understood how deep it went. Sound could vary from static discharge to actually somewhat okay sound. It varied. And later on, they actually released another version of the original Railroad Tycoon that offered newer maps for other countries as well as more locomotives and, and VGA graphics, which sounds like a very basic thing nowadays, alarmingly so, but back then that was a big deal. And yeah, that's, that's the kind of, you know, old school tech we were dealing with. This is the kind of game I often think of whenever I see an argument on Twitter about frame rates saying that, oh no, we need 4K and maximum 120 frames per second, it's what we all deserve. And I'm like, you children don't understand where I come from. Because, <laughs> yo, back in the day, this was, this was the jam though. 
Is it worth playing now, I guess is the real question, and, well, it is free, and getting a hold of DOSBox is also no big deal, so I guess you only have to worry about investing your time. And I'll put it this way, if you want something old, like a really dated computer game, just to, just to play, just to experiment with, just to see how it was, or if you're an older gamer and you may have missed out on this kind of game and are interested, then yeah, I would say it's worth it. It's good for what it was. It hasn't aged well at all. Like, comparing it to today's games is, you know, like not even close. But, of course, the technology was very limited. But, you know, it's kind of like going back to an old Atari game, I'd almost say. It's, it's one of those deals where it's like, yes, it is very dated, but for the time, it was excellent. So, if you're okay with that, then yeah, of course give it a try. It was a great game for what it was. This game was the brainchild of one Sid Meier, who you may be familiar with as his name is on various different games, such as the major one, the Civilization series. Even though he hasn't been heavily involved in Civilization in a while, at least not as a lead designer. Fun fact! The reason why they started advertising Sid Meier's name on the games in the first place was actually due to the suggestion of Robin Williams. No, seriously. I'm not making that up. It's just one of those things. They were at a, you know, a meeting and Williams was there and he was making them all laugh and he suggested advertising Sid as the star programmer for this kind of game. And they rolled with it because it was Robin Williams and well, the rest is history. Now everyone knows Sid Meier's name. Anyway, there isn't much more to say about the original Railroad Tycoon other than the fact that it definitely exists, and it's definitely a thing you could easily pick up and play if you really wanted to, but just remember, it's old. But now we can move on to my favorite Railroad Tycoon game, which is Railroad Tycoon 2. I adore Railroad Tycoon 2. Sid Meier actually was not involved in 2 or 3, for that matter, but the developers still did a phenomenal job and adapted the basic idea of the first game with newer technology, upgrading pretty much everything about it. Visually, the game is stellar for the time and actually has a very unique charm. They kind of went with this weird, I'd almost say Zudo 3D kind of look, where I, I think there are some 3D models in the game, but very, very few. Most of what I can see is that it's a bunch of 2D sprites, but they're shaded in a way that makes it look 3D in some elements. It's kind of like, well, Roller Coaster Tycoon, actually. I'm pretty sure Zoo Tycoon did the same thing. It's a very similar style in that regard. As the owner of a railroad, of course, the very idea is to connect various cities and move goods around. It sounds pretty basic, but it gets pretty involved as you need to know which cities require what goods and which cities supply which goods. You choose how big of a station you can get, and remember a larger one costs more money, and you also need to remember you have to maintain your locomotives, and different types of locomotives require different types of maintenance. Steam locomotives, for example, require water towers in order to function properly. All locomotives require some level of maintenance, as well as sanding towers, and there are also additional buildings you can attach to your station, such as hotels, restaurants, and things like that. That sort of thing, of course, enhances passenger service, which is also beneficial. The idea is, of course, to make as much money as possible and run a successful company. There's stocks to consider as well, as you can buy and sell various stocks in your own company, and start multiple companies at once, which is a feature that I adore and love, because as the name implies, Railroad Tycoon, you are in fact a railroad tycoon, a rich entrepreneur who's starting a railroad company. But most of the tycoons back in the day actually owned multiple different railroads. They didn't own just one. The reason for this varied, it depended, but generally it was a way to kind of hide the fact that they were running a monopoly. As this is a game, you know, do whatever you want. The point is you can have multiple companies that don't necessarily have to be competing with each other in the grand sense of things. As far as game mechanics though, well, the reason there's a separate company, I think, is because the game insists that, even though in real life railroads don't necessarily have to do it this way, once you start a railroad, it always has to be connected with wherever it goes. You can't just jump to the other side of the country and put line over there and have it be the same railroad. It has to be a separate company at that point. 
So from a game perspective, I see why they did it, but from a realistic historical perspective, I also see why they did it. It was a good idea. There are plenty of different types of locomotives, many are very recognizable. Some of those famous locomotives in world history are here, and the music is top tier, actually. They went for a smooth blues style musical overlay, very old school railroad style music, the kind of, you know, stuff that would get you to think about, well, a a different time, an older time, a, a forgotten time by some people. It really takes me back, you know, to, you know, to, to, to those days when it was all about the railroads. Building railroads, running trains. America ran on the rails. I've got freedom to sing the blues. I've got freedom spread the good news Well, I got freedom in the morning Freedom at night Freedom gonna help me to see the light I've got freedom From all of my pain Well, I got freedom From the pouring rain Well, freedom in the morning Freedom at night, freedom gonna help me to see the light. Lord, I had some troubles, you know I had them bad. But Lord, all my troubles really, really make me sad. Freedom came and took my blues, yes they did. I've got freedom in the morning and freedom at night. And freedom gonna help me to see the light. The game also has multiplayer as well as sandbox mode and various scenarios that give you different goals based off of actual historical railroads. So overall, it's actually a really great experience. It's a very, very nice, chill game that can be actually really hard. Railroad Tycoon 2 can get very difficult in certain situations, but not all of them. It doesn't always have to be ridiculously difficult. You can make it very easy and just sit there and chill. You know, it's one of those kind of games. Very similar to something like Roller Coaster Tycoon or Zoo Tycoon, but it's trains instead of, you know, animals and, uh, well, an amusement park. Like I said, Railroad Tycoon 2 is my favorite, but it wasn't the end of the series. There, of course, then came Railroad Tycoon 3. Now, 3 is an odd duck for me. Technically speaking, there aren't that many differences between 8 and 2. And there are actually a few improvements but I don't really like it as much. Music is still very good, and like I said, the core mechanics are pretty much identical, but what they did is because technology improved, they went for an outright 3D appearance. And it was that awkward time where, yeah, things were 3D, but it was kinda ugly in some cases. It just doesn't look as appealing as the way that Railroad Tycoon 2 did. 2, yeah, it might technically look dated, but it had style and flair. And 3 just looks kind of like, yeah, those are definitely 3D models, and they definitely exist, 
That's cool and all, but it wears off pretty quick, especially in the modern day. You know, I shouldn't get on it for graphics alone, because from an actual mechanics perspective, I suppose it's not that bad. You know, it, it has some good ideas. For example, one thing I do really like about 3 is that they have an automatic function when it comes to setting up your trains. See, in 2, whenever you made a train, you always had to keep track of where the train was going and what was on the route and which demands that particular city had and what supply there was, and you had to micromanage all of that. 3 has an auto setting where the game does that for you so that actually does make that a lot easier and less time consuming overall. And the automatic setting is actually pretty good. It will generally optimize the train, so you'll be getting the most money out of a route without necessarily having to worry about it yourself. Now, it is true, that might be part of the game for some people, and 3 does still leave the option open for you to be able to do that on your own if you so choose, but the point is there's the choice here to not make it as difficult as it otherwise would be. One thing I don't like is that in 2, something that was very streamlined was the extra buildings. Whenever you build a station in 2, you always added on the extra buildings to the station, since it made sense, everything had to be near that. But in 3, it's a separate tab entirely, and you actually have to manually place the buildings wherever, well, you want. Now, on one hand, you can put certain buildings in spots that you otherwise wouldn't have been. They don't always have to be tied to a station, and that can be really nice for longer lines where you might need, say, a water tower in the middle, just in the middle of nowhere, because, well, steam engines need water. But on the flip side, um, this is actually really, really annoying because you usually won't be doing that at all. Usually you will have to just put it near the station like a normal person, and you have to manually do each individual building, and it's very, 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 very tedious. The amount of locomotives in the game are still pretty good, and yeah, I guess the visuals aren't as appealing as two, but they're still nice for the time. There's plenty of interesting scenarios, but another thing that really drives me crazy is actually one of the menus campaign menu as you're going through this kind of museum showroom. Now, that looks really, really, really visually nice with some cool pre-rendered stuff, but it takes forever to go through it. And it's a menu. Okay, just make it a list, please. It doesn't have to be this fancy. I get that you guys were trying to show off this cool new 3D technology, and it's cool to see some of this stuff, like, hey, look, it's Mallard. But also, 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 it takes like 30 seconds to go through the whole list, and not because it's a long list, but because you have to manually click. Is Roar Tycoon 3 worth playing? Well, people do like it. It is still a good game. I just don't care for it as much as 2. That's just my opinion on that particular matter. It's not that the game is bad. It's actually good. It is. It's enjoyable. It still has a lot to offer in terms of scenarios and different things like that. It's still Railroad Tycoon. It just... I don't know. It just doesn't vibe as well as 2 did with me. That's just where I'm at with 3. But I still really liked it. Now you might be saying, well, that's the end of the review. There's no more Railroad Tycoon games. Uh, that's not true. And I know I'm not talking about the mobile ports for Railroad Tycoon, which I'm not going to get into because they're pretty much just remakes of, like, the original Railroad Tycoon. I heard they were good, but I'm pretty sure they're, like, lost media now. It's hard to get a hold of that. Uh, but there is at least one more Railroad Tycoon game that is genuinely considered a part of the series officially by the developers and the publishers, and that is Sid Meier's Railroads. Yep, Sid came back. Well, not exactly came back. What happened was the developers of Railroad Tycoon 2 and 3 got folded by 2K Games into the development studio that Sid Meier was in charge of, so naturally he became in charge of the Railroad Tycoon series by default, and he chose to create another Railroad Tycoon game, but he called it Sid Meier's Railroads instead. It is considered a part of the same series, and for all intents and purposes, this is Railroad Tycoon 4, and its intro cutscene is actually pretty cool. I, I, I'm not gonna lie. It has this guy making a model train set, but it bounces back and forth between that model train set being real and, well, just a model. It, it's actually a very, 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 very cool pre-rendered cutscene. I really enjoyed it. The game itself is alright, but it definitely has a unique style, like a very, very, very unique style. Whether or not it's a good or a bad style really depends on personal opinion because everything looks like, well, toys. 
it seems like model trains was kind of the goal here in order to emulate everything. Because everything looks very, well, toy. Just not very realistic, just a bit more cartoony. If you like that, it's alright. There's nothing wrong with that. For me, I prefer the more realistic style. Um, that's just my opinion. But the mechanics are still there, and this is still very much a Raro Tycoon game. But everything's been simplified to a degree that I'm not sure would vibe with a lot of people. A lot of people do enjoy this game, but you no longer have to worry about things like train maintenance and stuff like that. You just kind of put them on the track and let them go, and the whole focus is connecting the various routes, and making sure that every single train has the appropriate goods on it. Outside of that, though, you're not really worried about the kind of train, and, you know, it feels like that's a lost feature. I think the idea was to simplify the element of running a railroad, trying to focus more on the actual, you know, building of trains elements, rather than worrying about maintaining them necessarily. And I get that, but if you wanted to emulate a real railroad, that's kind of not the way to do it. This is well, more like emulating a model railroad, actually. And maybe that was the goal. Maybe that was the point, to try to make it seem more like that. And it's still fun, actually. I enjoyed playing it. Music is fine, and the visuals, if you're okay with the new style, are definitely good, and there's plenty of locomotives here, as well as different maps, but it just doesn't feel like it has the same flair or heart as 2 did, or even 3 for that matter. It's just more focused on just the building of the track. Which, if you're into that, yeah, it's good, it's fun, it just felt a lot more hollow than 2 did. That's kind of where I'm at with it. Also, there's one thing that drives me crazy, and it's only driving me crazy, and I recognize that. Most regular gamers probably aren't even going to notice this. But it bothers me. Why in the world do the tender engines not ever have any tenders? Now, some of my less train enthusiast followers probably have no idea what I'm talking about. Okay, look. A tender engine refers to a steam locomotive that has, well, a tender behind it. If you've seen a large steam locomotive, you probably notice they carry that little car behind them that carries their coal and the water. That's their tender. A locomotive like Thomas doesn't have a tender because he is a tank engine. Tank engines specifically don't have tenders, they have tanks. But tender engines do, hence the name. They have tenders. And not a single one of the tender engines in this game actually have any tenders attached to them at all. This drives me nuts because I don't even understand why they would have made this kind of decision. Why not just make the tenders a part of the 3D model? It's the tender. It's a part of the locomotive. I mean, okay, technically speaking, a tender engine can move without its tender. But not very far or very easily. They need that for their fuel and their water. It, it's kind of an integral portion of their workings, and not a single one of them has it, for reasons that I fail to understand, and it just drives me crazy. The diesels and the electric locomotives don't have to worry about this because they don't have tenders. They're fine, but the tender engines are supposed to and don't. Like, why would you not include the tender? I think the reason is because... because the you know, joints, the connections, the couplers between the various rail cars actually bend in this game and have to, you know, go around corners. Basically, the tender would have to be a separate car as far as the game's coding was concerned. So in order to get around this, they just removed it, which is still... No, there, there was a way you could have done that properly. You've been doing it up until now. Even Railroad Tycoon 1 had the tenders there. I know it seems really, really dumb, and I, I acknowledge that, but it bothers me. Anyway, Sid Meier's Railroads is still a fun game either way. I would just personally recommend, well, Railroad Tycoon 2 over it. And that's where Railroad Tycoon actually pretty much ends. They did later port this game to mobile, and you could still get it on your phone, believe it or not, and it has rave reviews, so that's something. But outside of that, and having, you know, the original Railroad Tycoon for free, there really hasn't been much of anything else in terms of this series. It's dead, and has been for several decades now. 
Now that seems to have more to do with the fact that a lot of big name AAA companies are less keen on doing these kind of business sim games. That's been reserved lately for the indie scene, and there are a plethora of Railroad Tycoon style games that adapt the mechanics to a modern setting. Some really great examples of this are things like Railroad Corporation, as well as Transport Fever 2, which is one of my favorite games ever, by the way. Maybe I'll cover those some other time, but the point is, the actual Railroad Tycoon game, I don't know if we're ever going to get a Railroad Tycoon 5, and even if we did, I mean, there's already plenty of other devs doing the same thing. But the original games did something revolutionary. They started off the Tycoon formula. This entire genre owes a lot to Railroad Tycoon, and they're some of my favorite games ever. I still enjoy this kind of game, this kind of chill business sim where I can sit there and manage stuff. I don't have to worry about, you know, something hitting me in the face like an action game. I just get to sit there and run trains. It's, it's therapeutic for me. You know, it's one of those things. Till next time, this is Darkness, and I bid you all a fond farewell.